Thank you all for linking in and attending. We have quite a few participants today, which is great. It seems like we've got some great interest in Digital Press Watch, which is great. And we do appreciate you taking the time out of your busy days to give us a few minutes here. I'll talk uh, about Digital Press Watch. I'll have some slides, but also we'll do some demonstration. And then there's some additional information about Maxwell itself. We hadn't planned on going through you know, the beast of Maxwell itself today but we're happy to point you to more information and also we will be doing additional webinars about Maxwell in the future as well. So, At any rate, what is this digital press watch beast? Well, it combines a number of important features that take advantage of the, uh, the X-Rite ISIS, the I1 ISIS, as well as the ability of a digital press. So one of the greatest abilities of digital presses is that every page is a new job. And while that can make monitoring jobs and different things challenging, it also opens up a lot of different opportunities for us. And one of them is that we can do full page targets. And that's a great thing, uh, because at any time, we, you know, you can inject into a print stream a target. And with barcoding and whatnot at the top of it, it makes the routing of that target and the interpretation of the data a lot easier. It's almost zero config at the operator end of things, and so I'll talk about a little of that a little bit more. So we have this combination of cross-sheet diagnostics that we can do because we're doing a full target read, full page read, the routing that goes along with it, and then we can collect meta metadata along with that in the barcode. So if the system that's generating the target or, or, or spitting it into the workflow can encode information into the barcode, uh, we can gather that metadata as well. So it can be paper information, customer information, job information, whatever. So uh, this also gives us the ability, uh, the way that the system's set up so that we can have multiple scan stations. Uh, and that can make life easier and more reliable in busier press environments. Couple that with some real-time feedback that you get a report right in front of you right away. Then also uh, all sorts of reports online through Maxwell makes quite a compelling bundled solution. So what are the important features of Maxwell in this? The full sheet analysis, the data gathering, the routing, and the feedback. So to get into that in a little more detail, we really do take advantage of the full sheet. And this is probably the most unique situation or the most unique part of this service is that we're, we're doing full cross sheet uh, measuring and that allows us to find out all sorts of different stuff. But that doesn't mean that we're not doing the normal things because the target can contain all of the patches that you might want to, to normally contain. So solids, neutrals, uh, different tints, whatever you want can be included in that target for sampling. And the normal pass-fail capability that you might want to happen uh, can be active. It's just it has the additional ability of now doing target geometry work. It's generally pretty fast. The speed of the ISIS makes it pretty quick. The measurement of one of these larger targets that I have here takes a minute or two, something like that. It can be sped up by making either smaller targets, depending on your press size, or larger patches. The larger patch makes it, there's a bit of a trade-off for that, but it definitely speeds stuff up. And it's being used today and has been used for press and job qualification work. So the auto scan and auto route stuff I'll get into in a little more detail. But basically, multiple papers from multiple presses for multiple customers can be fed into a single ISIS. And I'll show that. You just uh, click this button that the labeled auto scan and it puts the ISIS into this auto scan mode or it's willing, you know, it's able to accept any target that you pass into it. And the operator simply sees one of these targets come out of the press, walk over to the ISIS and feed it in. They don't even need to press a key on the keyboard. Um, the ISIS does the measurement and goes from there. So it's the feed and fly kind of idea. Because of the zero config capability of it, uh, you could have more than one workstation with more than one ISIS for redundancy and for speed. You can just walk to the next one that's available, fire it in there, look at the report if they need to, and then walk away. So let's get a quick look at some of the full sheet analysis because this is some of the, uh, the guts of it, the eye candy of it. The image on the left is the scan. This is a screenshot out of uh, the Maxwell web interface in this particular case. The target on the left is the scrambled target that was scanned. We can create a variety of different targets for this. As I said, they're normally full sheet, but, but they don't have to be. Then when it's scanned in, you get a heat map, effectively. So the, the patches are colored by their delta E values. And what that does is you can see pretty quickly 
is it starts to illustrate different problems that are happening on the press. Uh, and digital presses have all sorts of interesting uniformity issues showing up. I don't think they're horrible from a uniformity point of view, but um, they do have some interesting problems showing up. And when they show up, they can certainly affect your work. In this particular case, this is a, a streak with the Kodak Next Press. And, and this particular problem is actually not that uncommon where you get a streak showing up. And we have people saying, well, does this fix the problem? Does this system fix the problem? And the answer to that is no. And, and at this point, we don't think that's appropriate either. This particular press has a system that fixes the problem. It has a, a thing where you print out four sheets and you scan them in and it recalibrates the LED array, gets rid of streaks like this. But their system doesn't do any detecting. You have to start looking at jobs and seeing problems showing up or have customers do it before you're going to see the problem. So this is a pretty quick illustration of the kind of problem that can show up. This next slide is a is another example of one on the, uh, I believe it's on the Indigo. There's this operator replaceable unit called the BID. And when it starts to have problems, or in fact if it's installed incorrectly while the press is hot, it can warp it or something, and you can get problems cross sheet showing up. And this is a very, very quick, very obvious illustration of the problem. What's interesting about these heat maps is that there's no English, there's no language here. It's a very visual thing, and we're finding that the press operators really like this. Um, it's, it's being used around the world, and so it's, it's interesting how the language issue becomes less of an issue. And also it's being used sort of as a badge of honor. Some, some press operators actually post this near their press, and uh, they look at each other's and they keep an eye on them, that sort of thing. But the problems that will show up here can show up you know, in a more subtle way. And then the press operators can make decisions like, well, I'll finish this particular work, and then we'll do the, the maintenance required on the press, and then we'll work on from there. So it can also give them an eye of what's happening beforehand. But it's very visual. It's very, uh, it seems to be speaking the language of the digital press operators, and we've, we've had a lot of positive feedback about it. I think I have a couple more screenshots. There's another one where a bigger problem is starting to show up, but it's still heavy on one side of the sheet. Like any other Maxwell uh, target that's measured, you can still drill down into it, and I'll show a little bit more about that in a minute, and get you know, the patch-to-patch -patch comparison, take a look at the metric summary of all the metrics that you may have put in there relative to the tolerances and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so it's, it's, it has all the things that Maxwell has. Let's talk a little bit more about the mechanics behind the auto-scan and the auto-routing. Uh, basically, it's blind scanning of targets. So when you press auto scan in the Color Shuttle software, the Color Shuttle software is free software that you download and install on the client system. And it's used if you need to interface directly with some hardware, like an ISIS or an i1 Pro or something like that. It's not necessary if you're just you know looking in Maxwell, doing uh, looking at reporting information or configuring it or something like that. But it is necessary if you want to drive an ISIS directly, that kind of thing. So the operator uh, puts it into auto scan mode. They put the target into the ISIS, and the first measurement is for the barcode at the top of the form. The target information is then downloaded into, into uh, Color Shuttle. Now, what's interesting about it is that particular installation of Color Shuttle may never have seen that target before. It reads the barcode, and then it pulls down all the target information it needs. So there's no configuration for that. There's no, oh, where's the target reference file so that I can scan this thing? There's none of that kind of stuff. It just comes down from Maxwell. Okay. So then the t scanning proceeds. Now while it's doing the scanning, it can pull down all the metadata, well it uses the metadata that's in the barcode to determine which track within Maxwell the data is supposed to go. So that's how it figures out what press it came from, which paper it's for, all that kind of information. And using that it's able to determine the color reference information that it's supposed to be using, what the color aim is, what the metrics are, what the tolerances are, what the label or report printing layout is and the graphics for that and everything. So while the scanning is underway, it figures that out and it pulls all that information down from Maxwell. It caches that information. So the next time a measurement's done, if it's for the same press and same paper and it needs the same information, that sort of thing, it goes, it goes ahead without having to do it again. So when the scan is complete, then it calculates everything and generates stuff. It makes it very simple on the operator end, and for busy digital printing environments, that can be a godsend. Um, it also reduces error significantly because the wrong measurements don't go into the wrong place. The stuff is automatically uh, recognized and sent to the right location.
The basic architecture of Maxwell is pretty straightforward. It's a centralized system. We've had questions about people uh, wondering, you know, are we going to sell a server version? Are we going to sell a version that people can install on their own servers? We might go that direction someday. But what we're finding is that people, once they start using Maxwell, they realize they like the cloud idea. Um, they see the security that's around the data storage, so they, they feel comfortable about that. And it removes a whole lot of issues of different plants trying to talk to each other or different customers trying to get in through firewalls and all sorts of problems like that. Three basic pieces are the web browser component um, that you can use to configure Maxwell, sign into it, do whatever. The color shuttle piece I talked about. And then we're sending emails and such to smartphones and, and things. And we're, we're working on an interface that's more friendly to them. Um, the Maxwell interface is it's usable with an iPad. It's not terribly usable with an iPhone at this point. But uh, you can certainly get email notifications in that to, to these different devices. So I think I'll jump out at this point and give a bit of a demonstration, and then we'll get into some of the other bits and pieces within Maxwell. And I believe I'm sharing my whole desktop, so hopefully you can see what, uh, what's going on here. So with, uh, with Color Shuttle, it's a fairly straightforward setup. Um, you run the software. There's a list of my configured printers in here. Um, and you select one of them and make it the label printer, basically. And then you just start feeding things. In fact, the configuration of tracks and stuff, if you're using Digital Press Watch, happens automatically. So all you really need to do from a color shuttle point of view is put in the user credentials, uh, the username, password sort of stuff, so that it has the rights to do what we need it to do. And then you click on Auto Scan. And basically, it connects to the ISIS and... Uh, and gets ready to go. Now, hopefully, I'll have a reasonably straightforward and quick read here. This is a fairly large target, so it will take a little while. But um, we'll just step through the process at the very least here. So um, it's reading the barcode now. You know, it does its, uh, basically it does one pass to read the barcode, another one to read the black bar, and, uh, and then it does the lookup that's required. And it's, as I mentioned, it's, it's pretty quick and it does the full configuration of what's required. So um, now we're getting the track routing successful message, uh, which is always a good sign. And that means that basically it's, it's starting to scan. And so it's been able to look up all of the information that it needed. Uh, and Color Shuttle also caches that, as I mentioned. So you know, one of the concerns about cloud-based systems are, what if the cloud isn't available uh, right at a time when I need to do mission critical work, and that's a that's a reasonable concern without a doubt. Uh, one of the benefits that we have here is that Color Shuttle has a comprehensive store and forward solution system underneath it. So while it does its best to continually be as up to date as possible, um, it also caches everything that it's pulled down from Maxwell. So I could you know I don't want to do it as a demonstration right now, obviously, or I'll end this. Uh, this WebEx that we're doing, but I could basically take us off the network right now and it will continue to scan this, save it, and and also scan additional targets. As long as it's seen the target type before and it knows which track it's supposed to go into and it has all that kind of information, uh, it will happily continue to take measurements and cache them and store them in its database until the next time Maxwell is available and then it'll automatically upload it all into Maxwell. So um, it, it, it basically makes it capable in a, in a mission-critical application, whether or not the Internet access is always there. Now, one of the things that was an important decision for us to make with Maxwell and its architecture design was that it was a cloud-based solution, and so Internet access is pretty much required. But it's fair to say that that's kind of ubiquitous these days in professional printing environments. It's pretty rare for it not to be available. People's phone systems are going over and everything, so it's, it's rarely an issue.